Last time we asked what makes atoms so vastly different from each other and found out it's all in their atomic number or amount of positive energy in its core nucleus. Today, we're gonna look at the amount of neutral energy inside each atom. You see, while the positive energy is the same in each atom type, the neutral energy varies. Here's what I mean. This is hydrogen with an atomic number of one ball of positively charged proton. But there are different versions or isotopes of hydrogen. See, here's one version with one neutron in it. It's called deuterium. Here's another version with two neutrons in it. That's called tritium. And here's one version with no neutrons at all. You heard that correct. Hydrogen is about the only atom in the world that can operate without a neutron. That's because there's only one proton in the middle, so it doesn't necessarily need the glue that, that is neutrons. The most common isotope or version of hydrogen is the one with no neutrons, protium. Almost all hydrogens in the world are calculated to be this isotope. The deuterium isotope of hydrogen is actually not that desirable at all to animals and plants. It's easily unstable at elevated temperatures and pressures, so we we like to keep our hydrogens having no neutrons. Now, when we average the amount of neutrons in different atom versions with the same stable amount of protons, we call that the atomic mass. Why don't we calculate the mass of electrons? Well, because they're so ridiculously and magically light, most of the mass of the atom is in the nucleus. Here's where you find the relative atomic mass of an atom. See, if you subtract the atomic number from it, you'll get the average number of neutrons in that atom. Let's try it out. Let's take a look at arsenic, a useful but also highly poisonous element. Arsenic has an atomic number of 33, which is the amount of positive energy in its nucleus. And that heavier bottom number is its relative atomic mass. So if I subtract 33 from 74.92, I'll get the average number of neutrons found in arsenic atoms. 41.92 neutrons, way more neutrons than protons, am I right? Now let's look at calcium, an element found widely in fruits, leafy greens, beans, and nuts, and in our bones. Calcium has an atomic number of 20 protons and an atomic mass of 40.08. That's protons and neutrons. So to find the average number of neutrons in the calcium atom, we subtract 20 from 40.08, which is 20.08 neutrons, about equal to the number of protons in a calcium atom. Okay, calcium, pretty balanced. So now that we understand isotopes and atomic mass, let's go back to that question from that last video. What makes lead so poisonous to our brains compared to the healthy zinc, iron, or calcium? The answer lies in its atomic mass. Check it out. Today, we're gonna break down the science of lead poisoning. And to do this, we're going back to chemistry, baby. So check it out. This is your brain. Your brain is great. It processes a lot, not only thoughts, but the vital nutrients and minerals that helps you process those thoughts, like copper, zinc, iron, and calcium. They each roughly have a relative mass of 64, 65, 56, and 40. Lead has 208. Whoa, that's a lot of pressure, and entirely too much for your poor neurons, so it damages them. And when brain cells get damaged, that leads to things like learning disability, an inability to concentrate, the lowering of one's IQ, a permanent loss of brain power, and behavior problems, including disruptive and even violent behavior. So this makes lead extremely toxic to the brain, like even a little bit. But you want to know what's even wilder? Children living in poverty have significantly higher average blood lead levels than their wealthier peers. And what's wildest, people living in poverty are the most represented category of people in American prisons. Sort of makes you wonder what's really going on. But you have the ability to stop it by demanding better, only voting for politicians with a proven track record of putting your health and well-being first. Also getting with a coalition of folks who will help you keep the ones you did vote in accountable to your health. Oh, and get yourself a filter. Now, till next time in the adventures of environmental justice, where science and your life meet. Yet another reason why energy matters.